G'day Roosters. So we've got this civil design of the roads to the south of our property where we're doing our Revit's building model. How do we bring that surface in of that road design into our model so that we can use it for reference and, de and design relative to it? So first of all, this is the civil design drawing that's been just stripped down and it only has some text to orientate yourself, some contours of the road design and the boundaries and the architects place the grid in this model so that we can place it against our Revit model grid. Now this file is in the survey coordinates so I don't, I'm not going to move that, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now there's one area that is uh, quite different that I have adjusted. Unfortunately the, sur the, three, the surface design from the civil designer wasn't in uh, 3D contour, so I had to manually do this, which was a bit of a shame. You can ask your civil designer to send a 3D uh, file of your contours or a tin surface, which will work. So yes, you see the contours here, they have elevation, 33.4 meters, which is a, um, a global datum. And we have it on a layer called contours, which will be why that's important we'll show you later. So that's all of that, that's saved. Let's switch over to Revit. Now we have a level in here called 0 0.00. Now AHD is the height datum reference for this area that I'm working in. If I look at the east view of this project, we see the building is modeled and we it has the levels that have, you know, relative to the site and what the architect set for the levels. And we have this 00, zero down the bottom here, which is a, just basically a datum reference that you can link things to that you want to build off the zero datum. So what I do now is I'll link, link CAD, link that file in. So that's that file there, the road design. Current view only must be ticked off or this will not work. Black and white, yeah, that's what I normally do. In, import units, yes, it is in the file, the, the DWG AutoCAD file as meters. It will bring it in correctly, but I always just make, I just tick that on there and that, uh, say fluffing about with some, with it coming in with the wrong units. Uh, tick that off. We don't need that. We want it exact. Don't need that one. Uh, place at orientation. Now we don't have a shared coordinate, so we just go center to center and I'll align the grids to grid manually. So we'll import that. It'll plop it in the middle here, which would be nice. Now, of course, that's a bit hard to see so because uh, it's black on black and laying over each other. So I'll just move it over there temporarily. Type in VG, go to Import Categories, expand that one out, which is your name of your file. I always do half tone because it makes it lighter, easier to see, and differentiate between what's your model and what's your reference model. Change, the, Select everything, change the color to, say, green because it's um, design um, and make the line weights one so it doesn't dominate the drawing anything. Now, how do I align that with that? Well, one simple way is the align tool, which is AL, AL. You can align by selecting the grid you want to go to and the grid you want to align to, and then you can select another grid and select that other grid. And if we zoom in, just always do this. Sensibility check, U is aligned to U, 18 is aligned to 18, that's great. Let's just check the other end, A is aligned to A perfectly, and 1 is aligned to 1. So I have confidence that that is aligned correctly. Going to the 3D view, you can see the uh, DWG file, because I selected, did not select current view only, you can see it in this view, and you can see uh, the reference stuff at the bottom, the grids, the boundaries, etc the text, and we have the contours up here in 3D, and they look about right. That's that's aligned about right to where the boundaries. You can see an entry ramp here, that those contours are not far away. So now we want a topo surface. So we go to uh, massing and site. We've got topo surface. It's giving this error message because topography is not turned on as a category in this view. We'll fix that up later. Select an import um, instance from the ribbon up here. Hover over this. Uh, linked object here. Now you can always check you're on the right one. Down here, notice this area. It's got the name of our DWG file. I've got the right one. It gives you a list of all the layers in the DWG file. Click none always. Click none. Go down to your contours, which is just all the line work, and then import that as a surface. You won't see anything, like I say, 
So I have to tick yes on that. You can't see anything yet because if I type in VG, go down to model categories, go down to topography, turn that on, and now we'll see it. Now there is an error here because the DWG file had some objects on contours layer, layer at zero. Rather than going in the DWG, re-importing and recreating this, just click on the surface, click edit surface, delete those two points, and that'll be fine. Now remember that the surface, the topography surface that you've created in Revit is not dynamically linked to the Revit, uh, the DWG file. So um, if you did change the DWG, you've got to redo this, the whole thing again. Now, un of course, that's not desirable because I only want to see, uh, if we go back to this, you can see it clearly. I only want to see the surface where the road is. I don't want it projecting uh, between where the road is, uh, which is you know, inaccurate. So how do I trim that up? Well, let's go back to our zero zero view. Um, and I will note on this zero zero view, I will just note a few things on this. I have got the view range set to unlimited and the cut plane set to something really high. So it shows everything in the model and the work sets for the actual building are turned off and I've only got the shoring work set uh, so you can orientate yourself. So there, there's a little trick there too. Now, how do we trim this? Well, on the massing and site ribbon, you've got a thing called split surface. Click on that, and what that gives you the ability to is to cut up surfaces. So we'll use this pick lines, and we'll click our boundaries that are in there. Now, they, they are a little bit invisible because the surface is hiding it, but uh, it still works. So I'll just ring that one first, and that'll do. It'll see we've got now two surfaces here, so we can delete one. So let's just keep going with our split surface and we shall find a boundary. So split surface, click the surface we want to split, click the pick lines and then just trim it down to where we want to split. This one might ring it, a, might be able to do this. Let's, not sure if this is going to work because we've gone outside the Yes, it should work. This should work. I just got to trim this one up. No, it didn't work because that because that because that's slightly gone out of that. So what I just need to do here is delete delete this one and do that one as a. It's trying to you could, just two splits. That's all you you can do. Um, so I'm having some issues there. Let's just simplify it a bit. And probably because it wasn't projecting past. I don't know what's going wrong here now. I must have some line work wrong. So if you ever get stuck, just abandon and start again. Uh, I'll try up here, see if this works. If this doesn't work, I'll just cancel it and start the sequence again. Yep, so that one worked. I can delete that one. So let's have another stab at this. Well, let's go the internal one now. So I'm going to go split surface. Split surface, select the surface I want to split. Click my pick lines to click my boundaries. I can see a boundary there. So I'll just keep going around and it picks one up even though I can't see it, which is pretty groovy. Didn't notice what those errors were. Let's still hope it works. It did. So keep going. Uh, now I've just got this last one along here. This one's not so essential because it's a long way from a site, but uh, I always like to do things neatly because the next person that picks up this model can easily work out what is going on. And uh, that's something I recommend strongly in Revit, that you model simply uh, so that it's, and set up your, set up your world uh, fine. I'll set up your model good so that you, you can easily um, work out what's going on when you come into a model. Now, I can't get that one to work, so um, what am I doing wrong? Someone put in the comments. I'm going to have one more stab at it. Surface, split surface. I'm going to do it in a different way this time. I'm just going to draw a line, a straight line, because I don't need that side at all. Okay, that worked that time. Don't know what I did wrong there, but we got it to work what we wanted. So now we've got the surface in this model as reference. So when we cut sections for this model and cut elevations, it will be 
more accurate and that'll be bang on. The only other thing I always like to do just to finish off is put it on a material layer that's logical. So site-road civil because uh, there will be a land survey one in there as well which will just be the current land survey because this is design uh, under construction the roads and then you can control that visibility in your section cuts.